In this video, we're going to walk through the essential requirements and steps to install Proxmox V. By the end of this video, you'll be ready to set up a functional Proxmox environment, whether for testing or production purposes. Let's get started. For a successful installation, you'll need the Proxmox V installer image, which is an ISO file. This image contains Debian Linux, along with all the packages required to run Proxmox V. Let's review the minimum hardware requirements. You need a 64-bit CPU that supports virtualization, such as Intel VT or AMD V. At least 2 GB of RAM is necessary, plus extra RAM to accommodate any virtual machines or containers you plan to run. A minimum of 32 GB of storage is required, though we recommend at least 64 GB if you're using ZFS for storage. You'll need at least 1 gigabit Ethernet and IC for network connectivity. Remember, more resources mean better performance, especially as you add virtual machines and containers. Before we get into the details, let's review some of the core terms you'll need to know. In Proxmox V, a node is simply a single physical server with Proxmox V installed. Once installed, the server becomes a Proxmox V node and can host virtual machines and containers. A cluster consists of several nodes working together to leverage advanced features, like high availability. With clustering, resources can be shared across multiple nodes, improving performance and providing failover capabilities. A virtual machine is a virtual version of a physical computer. By assigning specific resources like CPU, memory, and storage to a virtual machine, you create an independent environment that operates as if it were its own server. Unlike virtual machines, containers are a more lightweight virtualization method where only the operating system is virtualized. They are resource efficient but come with limitations in terms of customization compared to VMs. Understanding these terms will help you navigate Proxmox VE and make the best decisions for your virtualization needs. Let's go over the installation process for Proxmox V. Here's what you'll need. First, download the proxmoxv.iso image file. This file contains a 64-bit version of Debian Linux, the Proxmox V installer, and all necessary components like a kernel with KVM and LXC support, as well as the graphical interface. Second, create a bootable USB drive with this image file. Be careful when choosing the target drive to avoid overriding any other drive by mistake. Consider the flash drive needs to have at least 1 GB of storage available. When ready, insert it into a bare metal server ready to install Proxmox V on. Third, access the server's BIOS or EFI settings and set it to boot from the USB drive. Finally, follow the installation steps in the GUI. This is the simplest and most user friendly option recommended for most users. CLI installation is also available and a good fallback if the GUI installation fails, particularly on older systems. However, it is less user-friendly. Following these steps will get you up and running with Proxmox V quickly. Let's see it in action. After the server boots from the USB drive, it will display the main three installation options. Install Proxmox VE using the graphical mode. Install Proxmox VE using the terminal user interface. And some advanced options that include the debug modes. Proxmox VE provides three debug modes graphical, terminal UI, and serial. These installation modes will attempt to run a normal installation process and will help you to debug any situation if something goes wrong. The rescue mode can be used to boot into an already installed Proxmox VE system. This option will then attempt to search for an existing installation and boot using the ISO Linux kernel. This process can be useful to help repair a failed Linux bootloader or BIOS or UEFI malfunction. The test memory option. This tool can be used to test the functionality of any system RAM before installation to ensure that it is error-free and safe to use. In this video, we will walk through the steps for a successful installation while using the graphical installation process. Let's select Install Proxmox V Graphical. 
and hit enter. Proxmox V installation will begin. On the accept the end user license agreement step, read the end user agreement and press I agree to accept and continue. Next, Proxmox V needs to create its boot disk. On the target hard disk step, click the options button. The options button lets you select the target file system, which defaults to ext4. The installer uses LVM if you select ext4 or XFS as a file system. Proxmox V can also be installed on ZFS. As ZFS offers several software RAID levels, this is an option for systems that don't have a hardware RAID controller. The target disks must be selected in the options dialog. In the hard disk options window, Click on the file system list arrow on the right side of the field and select the ZFS RAID 1 disk file system from the drop-down menu. Click on the list arrow box next to the respective hard disk to select the hard drive to use. For this video, we'll use hard disk 0 and hard disk 1. Hard disk 2 and hard disk 3 won't be used, therefore we'll set them to do not use. Then click OK and then next to continue. On the location and time zone selection step, enter your country, time zone, and keyboard layout. For the purposes of this video, we will use United States for country, America slash Chicago for time zone, and we'll leave US English for the keyboard layout. Click next to continue. On the administration password and email address step, in the password and confirm fields, enter your password. In the email field, we'll use admin at lab.local. Then, click Next to continue. The Management Network Configuration step is where network information like IP addresses, DNS servers, and interfaces can be configured for the management network. If Proxmox VE is on a DHCP network, Proxmox will automatically load all the necessary network information. In this video, this node has no connection to the rest of the lab, so no network details need to be entered. Therefore, I'll just enter install.lab.local in the hostname field and click Next to move on. Finally, confirm the summary details and click Install to start the installation process. The installation process will take a few minutes and automatically reboot and load Proxmox V. We'll fast forward the installation process. After a few minutes, Proxmox V should have been successfully installed and has been booted into the Debian console. Now, we will log in to our newly created system. At the console install login prompt, type in the username root and press enter. Enter the configured password during the installation process and click enter. If successful, we have logged into the Proxmox V backend and confirmed the installation is successful. During this video, you have learned what are the files and minimum system requirements for a successful Proxmox V installation, how to perform a Proxmox V installation using a bootable USB drive, how to confirm Proxmox V has been successfully installed. We have completed our Proxmox V node installation and we are ready to begin exploring more options in the next videos. Hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.